What an exciting day. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what video I should do today. I got a phone call. Actually, Sheila got the phone call. Josh is coming. We're gonna work on the brakes today. We're gonna finally figure out the brakes. Then we had some stuff happen with the washing machine, which seems boring, but it was actually very educational. We took the motorcycle on a ride. We ended up taking the bikes out. There's a lot going on. This will be not our normal video, but there's gonna be some great information in this video. I guess buckle up. Every day is a learning day. Every day, every day, you never know. And I'm making this video. Today I'm supposed to be uploading later, so I've got a lot to do today. This might be a lesson learning day. It's not, it's not as good as techno time with Todd or anything like that, but it is good lessons to be learned. And we're excited to see what's gonna happen with these brakes. We're gonna finally get some answers. Roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go, but it's gotta be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. This is hill country. Look at that. We got trees. Oh, Pecan Park's on our right. It's the thing says our left. Let's see if we can find where the office is. Look up there. There's the office area. one of those situations where you show up and you're just too big like literally the back of our rig will be from there the front of the rig will be at the road and she says we'll fit was the most challenging thing I've done. Look at this. I had to miss that thing by like... Not by much. All right, Sheila has us on a new adventure. Where is this adventure? We are at Guadalupe River State Park. Okay, and then what exactly are we getting ready to do? We're riding our bikes today. Yeah, I don't know where we're riding, but she just said, we gotta find a way to get across the rapids, and those that that's not a good thing. Well, but we gotta get to the other side. Yeah, we gotta get to the other side. It's four o'clock, it gets dark around 6.15, 6.30. Uh, foreshadowing is it's going to be dark and I don't know if we'll run out of batteries. So I guess we'll see what happens. Todd's mad I didn't bring enough snacks. Yeah, we need snacks <laughs> for rides because she goes on these things. We might not get to eat. I had two hot dogs for lunch. I'm already hungry. So uh, yeah, let's, I guess we'll just see how this goes. You're always the pessimist. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realistic person. <laughs> and you push the envelope want, all the time. I, have, do you not have fun? I have fun, but okay, you're then. always pushing the envelope. Like, you push the envelope. So. But the, pushing the envelope, you're having fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm having fun. Stop it's fun. whining. So much fun. Stop whining. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Pedaling. I don't know what you're doing over there, Miss Lazy Bones. I'm pedaling. Pedal. I'm conserving battery because I'm worried. Ooh, look at that tree. That's cool. That is beautiful. All right. 
Well, I would love to kayak this. It was on my list. I guess what we should be saying is, is we probably come back to San Marcos area. San Marcos. Marcos, Marcos, but we'll probably come back this area because we haven't Texas even. Texas Hill Country, there's a lot we want to do, and so we will be back. Yeah, it is very pretty. I think we'll come back a little more into the early spring or the fall when there's some leaves on the trees. Yeah, I don't get any say in that. I don't plan the trip. You can. No, it's okay. All right, let's <laughs> All go. All right. I think I found a way to cross the river. We are not crossing the river right here. There's Sheila. You are not doing that to me. Are you serious? I'm just looking, Linda. She said it's the rapids. Is this the rapids? Well, it looks like it. We're going to get off and assess. So it's going to take an assess. We didn't even make it like four minutes. Are you sure there's a path over there? So let me get this right. You want to walk the bikes across these to get to that side. Is that what you're thinking? Is that really what you're thinking? You're making it sound like that's a bad idea. They're electric bikes. What if we slip and fall? All right. You'll be wet. I need to take my shoes. Are you sure that's the path we need to go up? How much sure do you need to be? I want you to look on the map. Okay, I'll look on the map. But it looks like this is the flat part right through here. See how it kind of has a ledge to it? Where the river, there's a, there's a, there's a rocky ledge, looks like right here. Well, that's deeper than one thinks. Look at that. You might have to take your pants off. No, we're on electric bicycles. It's not a two mile loop, it's two, it's 2.86 miles. goodness look out oh. Oh, 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 oh oh that talk about extreme biking see it was in the weeds i think you all psyched out no there's something in the weeds there was nothing in the weeds okay so these bikes are doing really good but this is your turn to go first i don't like this bumps well i don't know what to tell you no snacks thank goodness for electric bikes look at that those are dangerous. There's five of them. I went into the trees. She was super worried about the pigs charging us earlier. 
Oh well, welcome to Texas. Ah, oh, sun's going down. Beautiful. Ugh, electric bike time! Listen, RV life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. We're waiting for a uh, tech to show up to fix our washing machine, the Splendid, because the motherboard went out after 10 or 15 washes. So he's supposed to be showing up soon. Second thing today is I'm attempting, after 150 hours runtime on this, you're supposed to change the oil and do the maintenance. And I've never done that before. I watched YouTube videos. I'm not gonna go in great detail on how this is done because there is a lot of YouTube videos on changing out your oil and your filter and all this stuff. This is my job for today. And somebody asked about the batteries. I got the batteries all tucked away nicely. They're actually working well. We'll be boondocking again in a few days. So I'm looking forward to actually not having to worry about batteries. Today's gener generator maintenance. We're hoping by Friday we have somebody coming to help with the brake detail. I've narrowed it down to a wire, one wire, and one of the wheels is shorting out and causing us to have that brake sensor pop on and off. And it's usually when we go over bridges and you get the compression on the springs and then it'll pop on and then it'll pop off after a mile. So hopefully we'll get to narrow that down before we leave Texas area. So we'll see. So there's your update. I don't know where I'm going to fit this in the video, but at this point when you're shooting RV life videos, you just pretty much shoot everything. So wherever this pops in into our little video world kind of gives you an idea. You're going to have questions. I already know you're going to have questions. There's lots of, look, it's not hard. See, here's the oil. There's the spigot. You turn this, the oil comes out the bottom. You buy one of those. Did you know you can take your, your used oil to advanced auto or any auto part place and they'll take your used oil. Then I'll just throw the container away. And then I'll put the new filter on, put two coats of oil in, Bada bang, bada boom, check the filter, and we should be good for another 150 hours. Oh, and you have to use all genuine parts. I just did the whole video. If you're a handyman, I think you could probably figure it out after watching a YouTube, somebody that's a little more in depth. Other than that, we still are enjoying our spot, and the water's calling our name. We're thinking about doing another kayak. Gasket and the drum. There's a, this is your inner drum, and the plastic, white plastic here is the outer drum. And I'll show you when we get the top off. But nickels, dimes, cord, paper clips, all kinds of things. When it goes into high spin, right, they can get right between these and go in between the the system, and then through the the drain system, get stuck into the pump. So they put this access here to for you to be able to get in there and check it once in a while to clean things out if something was to get through. Okay. Uh, and if you don't do that, then what will happen if something does get through, and believe me, you'd be surprised what can get through there, right. as I've seen. Uh, it will jam the power blades in the pump and break the pump. Okay. So that's something that, and I always recommend just leave that plastic piece off so you don't forget it. Because it's out of sight, out of mind. People tend to forget to, to check that. I didn't even know it was there. No. See, people, yeah. That's, this, that's something the dealer should have told you. They should, go, they should have someone go through all these things with right. people. But anyway, they never do. Uh, so that normally holds about a cup to a Here cup go. and a half of water. So I'm going to open it and we're going to let that. You do have this floor, so it's not too bad. No, it won't hurt anything. Hurt anything. Trust me. And on that, you just turn it counterclockwise. Maybe. Nope, oh, there you go. Drain. Probably is easier when, well, no, it's on the floor, so yeah, yeah it's always. Yeah. I was say, it's about a cup to a cup and a half of water, which is normal. That just keeps the pump prime yep. in there. And you can hear, you hear what I'm flipping here? Uh huh. That's a little impeller blade there. Okay. And that's what pushes the water that's out. That's what pushes the water, yeah. Now, from just in the, right here at the beginners, that's where you stick your finger and check uh -huh. and make sure there's nothing in there because that comes from the drum down through here. Okay. 
the power blade sits at the back, but the coins and things, debris can get in there and they say, if you don't check it, uh, I mean, you may never have it. It depends how you, if you check your pockets real good. If, right. But I've seen ballpoint pens through there. Uh, I've seen uh, chunks of metal, uh, probably about that big, get through there. It's amazing. But anyway, that's that. Okay, so we're all good then. Yeah. So you're saying during the winterization process, Take, just if you if you simply disconnect your hoses from the machine, right? Disconnect your hoses. I mean, in a pinch, just just dis, disconnect. Turn the water. Disconnect the hoses, so there's no pressure going into the valves on the back. Right. Uh, open the drain. Drain the water out of the pump. Your machine's virtually safe. But a lot of people probably forget to turn that and get rid of that water. They do. They I forget. would have never have known. Well, see, you, but now you know. And, and if if you had if it had froze. And you didn't have the heat in this RV, then certainly that would have been right. That would have been an issue. Okay. Nope. But oh I, wow! I'm glad you did it. That's concrete for the weight, huh? That's why they're heavy now. Yeah. That's why it's heavy. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow, it's different. It's different. It's wiring. Okay, so the circuit, the main module board that we're gonna deal with here is down on this, is that black box down there? Oh, so it's not even that. I thought no, it was that. That's, that's the upper board. Wow. That's a really a different beast. I'm gonna grab another blanket so I can get on my knees here. I can't believe that they do something like this. It's ridiculous. It really is crazy. You know, this is not gonna, this is gonna be, you know, this is, we're in a situation where, where, uh, and on this one you can break, you have to make a note of where all the wiring is. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stage process. Yep. Because uh, you have wiring coming in here, 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 and this is a thing that breaks off when you when you try to change it because wires are hidden in underneath oh, here. Oh yeah. Man, get a picture of that. Yeah. Oh, finally. Good news, Sheila. <laughs> and. <laughs> And it works. All right, today is another fun adventure. What are we doing today? One of the crew sent us a suggestion of a bike ride. Ah, uh, finally a motorcycle ride. Yes, we're going on the motorcycle to something called the Devil's Backbone. The Devil's Backbone. It even sounds macho. Who names these? Things? I don't know. I think Harley riders. Probably, but we're not. You Harley riders. <laughs> You always need like these names. <laughs> Us Indian riders, we're just kind of like, ah, haphazardly, let's go. But no, we got to make it tough, Harley riders. Yes, let's go see what let's the, devil's, see the backbone devil's backbone is all about. All right, I'm looking forward to this. I knew. We haven't rode for a while. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high 
trust in our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high, even if the sky is falling down. Uh, be outside. Yes. Super windy. Oh. Yes, it's, it's windy. That's not loud. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Josh with Mobile RV Repair is here to rescue along with good old Sean. And you guys have been asking for like five weeks. Did you get the brakes fixed? Did you get the brakes fixed? We're, we're trying to narrow it down. So he, he seems to think it's still in the truck. He's going to check all the wheels anyway and we'll just see where it plays out. And we're going to see who's right. Right? Right. We'll Josh. check it out and get you set and on the road. <laughs> Who, who doesn't like have new momentums that have issues? Right. Right. You spend what? 150 grand on a trailer <laughs> and then you get some stupid problem. Uh, don't give me a hammer and a pair of channel locks, please. Yeah. Josh, how long have you been doing this? <sighs> Probably professionally since I was 12. Yeah. Going with, because it's a family business. Yeah. And then I started running by myself when I was 19. I got certified when I was 20. One of the youngest. Certified, certified Tex. Tex in Texas. He can be proud of that. That's a proud accomplishment. It is. It is. So we are we're in Texas. We're outside of San Marcos, and so finally got somebody saying, "Hey, we'll come and take a look." So I just appreciate that. Yeah. So we're gonna find out. We're gonna check is it out. when it grabs, it engages and pulls these out, and they suck up against here, and that's how you get your braking. So what they're saying is, is that. One of the wires, wires to this puck is probably scraped. Or where it's coming from here. Yes. Something That's of that nature is what they're they're referring. They're referring. To. This one looks fine though. I don't see any kind of wear on any of these wires at all. Okay. Yeah. Check one. Yeah, right. One down. How do they do it different? They actually did this different. So normally on some trailers they'll have the power coming to this side and then it'll piggyback to these. Right. Then the other side, well, the way that they did on, on this one is they actually have a supply line to each axle and it comes through the axle and that's where you get this. So the other side is actually the supply. <clears throat> this side is the one receiving the power. This is the end. But since we're already on this side, we'll still check all these right. and then go from there. Uh, uh, let's see. Not very many. So 5,000, 6,000? They use the, the grease that I like. So I use high temperature grease. And when high temperature grease, when it comes out of the bucket, it's it's red, it's right. bright red like that. As it wears, the way you know it's bad is it turns black. So you see how it's starting to get dark? Okay. You can see the wear. We found it! Okay. Uh, give me like a paper towel or something. I'm trying to hold this wheel up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Make me hold everything. Uh. You know that's good? There. That means you only have to take off three wheels. Yeah, this is a problem. For once in our life. And it's a good thing I keep these pucks with me. Okay. Oh, look, that thing is all fried. Yep. So what happened was, and the cause, is they have these little keeper pins. I don't know if you saw me when I took that one off. Uh -huh. They have little keeper clips, and they clip on here and hold the wire out of the way. So it runs it down here. So this would be tucked behind here like this, and this wire would just run along the top. <coughs> these obviously fell off and have gone somewhere. <laughs> um, and the reason why this hub was so hard to take off <coughs> was because, or maybe not, it might have just been how the hub was. How it was all stuck. Yeah. But we at least found our problem trial. 
You want to um, know something, Josh? What? The YouTube community was right. <laughs> hey, they are a lot of time. You guys are right. Look at that. Okay. We found the wire. I feel so, this is like a big relief to me. So. So what is it, these pucks, when you do this, you have to put a whole new puck in, you can't just splice in a new no, one? No, no. Yeah, you never splice these. I mean, you want as little wiring in here as possible. I mean, you just want it to be a straight shot in and out because that's probably what, you can see what happens when it gets loose or gets caught in something. Right. Um, it, it rips it and tears it. <laughs> so you want as little um, wiring in here as possible. And this thing has to be 100% clean. The main part, part about this job is just really cleanliness like with the bearings with the grease you can't get any dirt in here you can't get grease on any of these um your your yeah, brake shoes it won't stop yeah <laughs> well no it will it just burn it will burn and yeah. catch on fire <clears throat> there's a lot of trailers burned down because when people do these jobs they'll be touching the grease and then they'll touch all in here and or inside the hub um, and they don't clean it that grease will catch on fire nice Okay, so we put this new puck in. We got two new clips that hold this wire out of the way. You run the wire through and push it into this little connector um, that I'm holds it in place. Side. And then we got them wired up and all That's good it. to go. So brand new puck and everything's all. And you put all your bearings back in and good. Yeah, and then we'll be done. That was our problem child. I am so excited. We're supposed to be leaving tomorrow and uh, to not think about the stinking breaking issue any longer. And I wanna give a shout out to all the subscribers and all of the messages I received in ways to figure out what this was. And we narrowed it all the way down to a wire in the wheel and that is exactly what happened, which that means it saved Josh a ton of time to diagnose the problem because we had already gone through all that and I hope you learned something on these wheels. Yeah, the washing machine. I didn't know when we go to winterize that we need to change the plug and check that because I didn't know it even held water at the bottom. Um, and I imagine some of you didn't know that either. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Then you enjoy the time with the motorcycle and the kayaks. You saw the video earlier. <sighs> yes. I feel like we're finally making progress after like five or six weeks, right? So on to our next stop boondocking and then i believe carl's bad new mexico i believe that's where she's got us going so thanks for tuning in as always like comment subscribe and i look forward to sharing more stuff with you along our journey and we are out <laughs>